Today, the first topic of today's session is processing of materials via additive manufacturing and its challenges, for which we are honored to have Dr. Dan Satyaraj Sir. Dr. Dan Satyaraj Sir is an assistant professor at the Indian Institute of Technology, Indore, India, with expertise in the characterization of materials and advanced fabrication technologies, including AM. Development of high entropy alloys. He is also the recipient of Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship and did a postdoc at the TU Dresden, Germany. Welcome, sir. You can have the controls now. Oh, may I share my screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, so just I want to know who are the participants, uh, basically. So, based on that, I will make my talk in depth or something like this. Most mm -hmm. of the participants are from teach are research scholars, okay. teaching faculties, and a okay. uh, few uh, undergrad uh, master students, and okay. uh, four or five industry professors. See, okay. I got the idea. Okay, so. So most of these faculties are they wants to get some research idea and also students also kind of uh, they have to get some kind of uh, research idea right so that is the thing they want. So hope you could be able to see my full screen right. Are you able to see my screen? Hello, in your yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. And then I hope I can start this. Uh, I can start, I think, probably. So, a little bit I modify the topic. So, basically, I will talk about today mostly, I will talk about processing of advanced materials via additive manufacturing and its challenges. So, that is a plan, uh, that is a thing I plan to talk. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizing members. So with this, I will uh, start my lecture today. So uh, before going into the lecture, I would like to introduce about myself. So uh, I hope uh, basically now I'm working as assistant professor uh, in the Department of Mechanical Engineering from uh, IIT Indore. I joined here around uh, November 2019. So almost it's going to be a four years uh, uh, for me here now. Okay. Uh, so this is the content of my talk today. So briefly, I will introduce about uh, what is this advanced material, what I mean, uh, like advanced material, what is the need of it. Uh, basically, I'm going to talk about uh, multi-component alloys. So then uh, most of the things like how they're manufacturing this multi-component alloys through the additive manufacturing, like uh, some of the certain uh, research directions, uh, I will show you. Then if time is there, maybe a little bit about characterization technique we will discuss, then I will conclude. So this is the idea of my talk today. Uh, hope I hope you all of you know about this uh, materials diagram. So uh, uh, hopefully if you study the materials, you must come across this uh, uh, diagram al always. So for example, if you take our human life, like human development and materials development, it is both are always uh, go together, right? So, for example, if you take uh, in case of uh, old age, the, we use these stones for hunting the animals or for the construction of this any building. So, later on, uh, the mankind, we find the metals, then the enormous development will happen, right? Like, uh, like uh, people found these uh, steels, then they uh, started to manipulate the different kind of steel. They find the many number of steels and other alloys. So we can find that there are wide variety of nowadays, wide variety of materials are available, but still people are looking for uh, a new material, right? Like for example, if you take our periodic diagram, so almost we have 118 uh, elements are there, but still we are looking for uh, some kind of new alliance, right? Like because for example, still people are looking for high temperature application, still we need a kind of very good performance uh, materials we needed and also for for kind of space application if you take so the temperatures will be very low so for the low temperatures still we need to find out this uh, kind of different materials people are exploring so always 
so it will go together the material development and our human develop, uh, human era also will go to uh, always uh, develop together that's what i want to emphasize here so so in that point of view just i would like to say about this multi component it is not a new concept so so basically this concept is induced in the year 1994 it is basically it is called it like multi component alloy or it is called it like a high entropy alloy so the name the high entropy alloy was suggested by proposed by the professor ye he is a taiwanese professor uh, basically uh, what it means is uh, high entropy means so they are uh, telling about the configurational entropy of the system okay suppose for example if you take uh, five or more elements in equatomic or near equatomic proportion uh, that is basically it is called it like a uh, high entropy okay like for example people may think that suppose uh, if you go away from this corner of this phase diagram uh, they may think that it may form a kind of intermetallic alloys like uh, people initially thought that the alloys will become a brittle so we cannot use it for the further purposes like the uh, the researchers initially they thought uh, but uh, so when when they mix this in the ecotomic proportion surprisingly many of the alloys are Uh, given a very simple system okay like kind of it form a very simple crystal structure like fcc structure or bcc or kind of mixed fcc plus bcc structure so because of that they could able to uh, easily they could able to get the property out of it they could able to get a very good ductility mechanical properties functional properties so because of this crystalline nature still we can process this material and further we can improve these properties of this material okay that is the idea of idea of this particular alloy uh, so uh, the high entropy name basically come from the configuration entropy of the system okay the configuration entropy means that this depends on the number of cis, number of elements in the system suppose if you in, when you increase the number of elements that will uh, uh, increase your configuration entropy that which in turn decrease your give free energy that's why we are forming a kind of very stable uh micro structure or stable solid solution are forming in this particular multi component alloy okay so for example we can say that suppose if it is greater than 1.5 r means we can call it like a high entropy alloy if it is in between 1.1 to 1.5 r means it's called it like medium entropy if it is below 1 it is called it like a uh, medium uh, low entropy alloys okay like for example why it is different from the conventional alloys mean basically this basically the bias of this four core effects it's making it uh, very different because already i told about this high entropy effect because bias of the high entropy we are forming a stable uh, uh, microstructure i told so another is the uh, something like uh, uh, so this we already i just told like when you are uh, increasing it you, you can decrease the give free energy so that will form a rather form a simple solid solution uh, next is the lattice distortion effect okay so lattice distortion effect means suppose here we are taking a different elements different materials each has the the atom size is different sizes right like when you are mixing a different sizes in this unit cell so that will uh, give some kind of distorted energy like distorted uh, kind of uh, energy because of
Recording in okay. progress. So now, why it is very interesting for the researchers or uh, application point of view, you can see this application of this particular alloy or properties of this particular alloy. You can see here. So, for example, here I showed the specific strength with respect to temperature, the different alloys we compared here. Uh, for example, if you take titanium steel, if you compare it with that particular other conventional alloys, that the HEA system is giving a very good uh, yield strength. Okay, you can see here. So, also the fracture toughness also much higher in this high entropy alloy. Like some of the systems are giving very good fracture toughness. Uh, for uh, even as compared to the metallic glasses, you can find it toughness value is very good. Okay, mainly mainly because people thought that because of this core effect. So already I told about this slide. Is diffusion effect because of this slightest diffusion effect, the very good structural stability. Okay, like it will uh, the recrystallization will happen at very late, very high temperature or very resistance to the uh, high temperature annealing. So because of that, we can use it for the high temperature application. For example, uh, high uh, it can be a, the specific strength can be very good at high temperatures. Maybe uh, some simple system itself, like if, if you take cobalt chromium ion manganese system. That will be used for around uh, like the recrystallization will happen at around 800 degrees Celsius. It means after 800 only the uh, the grains have started to little bit recrystallize. Okay, so similarly we are resistant. Suppose if you take uh, some of this aluminium based system, it is giving very good resistance than other conventional alloys, uh, even at uh, elevated temperatures you can find. So not only for the bulk application, you can use it for the uh, thin film application also. For example, uh, nowadays people are trying to make it through PVD, uh, chemical vapor deposition, all those techniques. People are trying to make a coating of this particular HEA because already I told the HEA have very good, very high hardness, very specific modulus is much higher. So you can use it on a low modulus structure. Suppose titanium 6AL4V maybe have some less hardness than this aluminum based uh, HEA. So drastically, you can improve the property of this uh, uh, particular uh, surface properties. You can change. Okay, that is the main idea of this thin film coating. Uh, then same concept you can extend for the uh, bulk metallic glass also. Like similarly, I told like in steel, I told uh, in the same concept you can extend for the steels like this bulk metallic glass also. You can extend this uh, similar kind of concept like high entropy bulk metallic glass. Suppose if you are getting large del, then it is basically it is it will form a high uh, high entropy bulk metallic glass. Uh, already I told about the refractory. Refractories are mainly used for the high temperature application, like all these refractory alloys like titanium, uh, tantalum, caffeinium, niobium, or molybdenum. So all those combinations of this high entropy alloys will be excellent in the very high temperature application. Uh, very high ductility also is giving good stain hardening. It has. Uh, that is the main uh, advantage of this particular uh, refractory alloys. So, and also if you go for uh, cutting tools, so nowadays uh, people uh, mostly in the cutting tools, they will use the cobalt as a matrix, okay? Like as a reinforcement, we will use the WC for this uh, in order to make a finer uh, grain size. Uh, so in, in case of, in place of cobalt, um, some people try like to change it to the high entropy system as a matrix. Then they mix it with the WC, they, they got an enormous property change. Okay. So, for example, in case of fatigue life or fracture, fracture toughness is really enhanced when they are changing this uh, matrix as a Hachi. Okay. Uh, matrix as a, uh, uh, this Hachi as a binder. So, suppose here the aluminum based uh, things are aluminum based alloy Hachi system is used. So, that is giving equivalent to the cobalt, we are getting the harness value. But at the same time, if you see the fracture toughness, it is much higher, something around uh, two times higher than the uh, cobalt we are getting. So now uh, I hope you got the idea about uh, uh, what is multi-component or what is high entropy alloy. A little bit you may got the idea. So what is the application of those alloy? So now I'm coming to the additive manufacturing, like how much people uh, worked in this particular field. Uh, I just would like to introduce to you. I hope. Uh, in three days lecture, I hope you may got the idea about what is additive manufacturing. Uh, maybe this definition already you may know, right? Like, because why we go for additive manufacturing means because 
in case of subtractive or CNC technique, we have to remove the material. So here there is no need of uh, uh, no need of remove the material directly. We can uh, by the suppose if we have the digital model directly, you can uh, manufacture the uh, edit part layer by layer uh, build up approach. You can easily make it the toolless manufacturing and also the shortest time high precision we can get for the particular component or the freedom of design lightweight or so part consultation all those things are application of this additive already we know that so broadly we can classify additive manufacturing as this uh, three different classification so mainly i will talk about solid and powder based system i'm not going to concentrate on a liquid based system okay so solid based case means uh, the raw material will be taken in the form of solid okay so for example uh, if you take wire arc additive manufacturing so you will take a material in a solid form we need it in a wire form okay so same thing like this uh, we need it for the uh, fuse deposit modeling all those things we need it in a solid uh, 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 solid form okay but if you take powder based technique uh, maybe this SLS, selective laser melting or uh, uh, electron beam melting, so fused metal deposition, all those things are example for the uh, powder based uh, systems. Okay, so means uh, already I told this is the, how the setup will look like. In case of wire base, we have to uh, basically we have to uh, uh, use this arc kind of uh, technique, means the arc can be generated by the any of the welding processes like. Uh, already you i hope you may studied about this uh, mig welding tick welding or uh, any of this microplasma microplasma there are so many techniques are there in the welding so that uh, technology will be adopted in the additive manufacturing okay so in case of uh, powder based process the laser will be used as a source like the laser will melt the powder and layer by layer uh, it may deposit okay that is the idea of it okay so basically every method has has its own advantage and disadvantage. I will show you for both cases what is the advantage and disadvantage, then just we will go ahead. Okay. So, for example, if you go for a wire based technique, you can get a very good deposition rate. And uh, uh, basically, that uh, even your two meters or nowadays, I saw like 10 meters of uh, uh, the parts they have uh, made it in this uh, wire arc additive manufacturing. Theoretically, basically, there is no dimensional limit. Also, the cost also very economic as compared to the powder-based process. Uh, health cost is also less because we are using this raw material as a solid form. Uh, there is an advantage. Porosity also really much lesser as compared to the powder-based process. So that is a main advantage also in the VAM process. Limitation if we take, it is very sensitive to the process parameter. It means uh, you have to control the process parameter very accurately, then only you will get a very good deposition rate and portion of this wire is critical size and shape of the male pool everything is dependent on the wire size okay so nowadays people are using in the range of 0.8 to 3 mm uh, the people are using it in the vam okay based on that the male pool size will differ your properties will get differ uh, so you need to choose that uh, portion of the wire and shape of the wire according to your application or according to your what you need Okay, so the ratio of the beam diameter and wire diameter should be maintained. Always it should be greater than three. So these are all process parameters. It's a little bit tricky here. Okay, so you should take care of it. Uh, then you can, uh, if you take care of it, you can make a very advanced materials you can make through the VAM. So that is the idea. If you go for powder based, uh, you can make any kind of material, means ceramics, glass. There is no restriction in case of uh, RAM, if I go for RAM, then I have to, uh, I need to conduct the material some cases because it, it need to produce a arc. Some cases we need a consumable electrode or non-consumable electrode, all those things are there. But here there is no need of it. Like you can choose any material, ceramics, glass or anything you can mix in order to make a 3D object. Powder can be recyclable. So no need of support material here. Uh, but thing is that the printing time is really less, means the deposition rate is really slow. Uh, the porosity also the problem in this particular powder based process, like even though because we are using the laser, the melting sometimes it won't be a, uh, when you are using a multi-component, uh, multi-component uh, component in this material, so the properly it won't get melt. Some problems always happen, so that will create a porosity. 
Okay. Also, the powders are some powders are health hazardous. During this melting, it may get evaporate. For example, manganese if you take or some other titanium. So this will get oxidized. Then you have to maintain the uh, organ atmosphere or you have to do a vacuum atmosphere. So many things are there in this particular uh, powder based process because it is very health hazardous. Okay. So also only limited component, smaller component only you can make it in this particular. Uh, powder based process because we need a large quantity of material okay like for example if you go for uh, laser bed fusion then you need a kind of at least minimum 2 kg of powder is needed for the in order to make a smaller component because you need to fill up in the bed and uh, each layer depression after that the bed will go down then the division will happen okay so you have to fill up for that particular height of the part you have to fill the material Okay, so that is that is why you can only you can do a very small component. Maybe even if you go for any direct energy deposition, there also at least you need a one kg. You have to fill up in the powder mixture. Then only you can flow the powder. Okay, so these are all certain limitations. Okay, so even wire also certain limitation it has, but not like uh, powder. Okay, powder case you need uh, initial quantity. You have to make. You have to take very large quantity. Okay, that's what uh, I, I would like to say. I hope you know about the difference between this uh, laser powder bed fusion means what I'm trying to say SLM or DED. So in case of powder bed fusion, so you can see here, first you have to fill up the powder, then layer by layer it will build up and then the stage will go down, then the final part will get uh, uh, formed. For example, here they showed the simple gear manufacturing uh, using this. Uh, laser powder bed fusion you can see here so in case of DED uh, direct energy deposition you can see that the powder is flowing through the source okay like it's it's flow in the uh, uh, source of that particular laser that's why it's melted during that path itself then it is getting deposited layer by layer okay so nowadays there are so many materials are nowadays people are using it for the additive manufacturing so this is that particular uh, forthcoming era. You may find this materials as a very interesting for the additive manufacturing, high entropy alloys or uh, safe memory alloys. Also nowadays people are exploring through um, additive manufacturing, uh, safe memory polymers, piezoelectric material, uh, stainless. Uh, many of the nickel super alloys, uh, even special metals like kind of. You may know that, right? Like uh, nowadays, people are making the 3D printing of the home. You can make it like you can uh, by concrete directly. You can print your own home based on your design. You can make it. Uh, the IIT Madras is doing that particular uh, research. So you can enormous amount. You can uh, amount. You can save it. The cost also it is very reduced because of this 3D construction. Um, also, hydraulics, electronics, all those uh, printed boards you can make through the additive, uh, so you can save the cost. Okay, so these are all certain upcoming areas in this additive manufacturing. So with this, now uh, I hope uh, most of the participants are uh, PhD students or research students or college professors. They they would like to know, maybe continue some research or they would like to do PhD. So maybe research point of view, what kind of property they are measuring in this particular hydrogen light. Let's give some example. Uh, that's what I will try to do. Means uh, maybe two or three case study I will show you. Three case study maybe I will show you. Then with that I will just conclude my talk. I hope now you got the idea of what is multi-component alloy. I like what is the advanced alloy and then what is the at least additive manufacturing. What kind of uh, like what is the pros and cons of the additive manufacturing we discussed. Now we will go for the how we are making this uh, high entropy alloy through the uh, additive manufacturing and what are all these properties uh, people got it. Like some of the, I am not, uh, even I am going to show my result also. Also some of the researchers already did. Some of the recent papers I will try to see. Okay. First we will start with the laser additive additive manufacturing of high entropy alloy. Uh, so, suppose in case of laser additive of uh, high entropy, there are so many uh, literatures are there. Only few people are done till date. Means you can find some around 50 papers. You can find it in this particular uh, DED process or LED. More 
mostly people are working in lace. In VAM process, there are two or three papers are only available. Okay. So, for example, uh, uh, if you take this uh, uh, cobalt chromium ion based high entropy, nickel based high entropy, uh, mostly people done through the SLM or uh, DD process. Or some people are using the electron beam melting, uh, SE beam, SE beam also. These three techniques they use. So initially, uh, they found that uh, whether the phase formation is, whether it is how it is forming. Uh, initially, people uh, find it with the most of the cases, it formed the oxides, then uh, they tried to do it in the certain atmosphere, then they could be able to control this, all these uh, oxides or carbides, they could be able to control, they could be able to make a single phase FCC structure in this particular FCC based GA. Uh, only thing is uh, they can't able to control the uh, microstructure means so some cases it form the very fine structure uh, globular globular grains some cases in for example in case of building direction it form a kind of uh, epitaxial growth of the grains also they observe okay like kind of hydro most of the cases they observe the heterogeneous microstructure so nowadays how to make a kind of isotropic uh, properties out of it, the people are trying to make through this, uh, trying to change kind of parameters. They are trying to change, like they try to change the laser power or uh, they try to heat the substrate. So they are doing a number of ways. Uh, some of the papers are recently they published with the isotropic properties also nowadays. So initial papers are mostly they have the very good, excellent property they observed in this particular system. Okay, that's what uh, I try to say. So these are all uh, certain alloys uh, done through the laser based system. Uh, maybe we will take uh, one example like how they manufacture through these laser additive, what are all these property uh, they got out of it. Okay, so usually when you're taking it in the uh, DED, so this is basically they did through the DED. So when you're taking it through the DED, the particle size is the really very important one. Okay. So you have to choose a material that um, part, uh, the particle size should be, the powder size should be 45 to 105 micrometer, 45 to 110 micrometer. Then only you can, the flowability will be very good in the uh, DED system. Otherwise, suppose if you are taking any kind of fine powder, then you cannot uh, do some experiment in the DED. Okay. Suppose if you want to do SLM, so SLM means you have to take a fine powder, means it should be below 50 micrometer, then, then only you can use it in a SLM. Suppose if you go for DED, then you should take it around 45 to 110, okay. So here in this way, they have free mixed this high entropy alloy, they, they have taken this cobalt, chromium, iron, manganese, nickel, the average particle size is something around 67 micrometer, okay. So they have initially, they have taken. So inside you can see that certain powders have some pores, inside pores also, okay. So the layer by layer, they try to uh, uh, deposit this particular high entropy, means uh, they did some single layer experiment and multi-layer. This is the multi-layer experiment. Uh, so each layer, so you can see that uh, 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 melt pools, you can see like uh, melt pool is given in this uh, blue color line. The blue color line is uh, showing that how the melt pool is formed. And uh, the you can see the white color lines, right? The white color lines are the each layer, the laser movement uh, in the each layer after that. Uh, okay, so then they give some kind of uh, magnified image here. So they could be able to see two kind of microstructure. In case of this cobalt chromium, iron manganese nickel based high entropy is giving a two phase structure like eco axis grains or Dendrites. Dendrites means the epitaxial growth is happen. So mainly why it is happening means I I think it is mainly because of this temperature gradient effect. So so still by this property uh, like uh, uh, control like parameters if you are trying to control then, then you can change this particular uh, microstructure. But initially they got this kind of microstructure fine globular plus uh, dendrite structure. So also they did some kind of uh, uh, EDAX analysis. Maybe maybe the different colors here I showed. It means uh, that uh, here they show like how the each element is distributed in the matrix. Okay, you can uh, 
the rectangular each color is showing that everywhere the element is equally distributed in the matrix means cobalt chromium iron manganese nickel are uh, almost it is uh, equally distributed but in case of manganese you can see that some of these enriched like some of the break parts you can see it means there is some kind of manganese enriched particle is forming okay some cases chromium enriched particles are uh, uh, forming in this particular alloy okay so it, uh, so then they did some kind of uh, tensile test uh, in the tensile test uh, in the room temperature basically they got around 660 mpa in this particular alloy when you do it at very low temperatures like suppose uh, here they did it around uh, the uh, they did did it around in the uh, liquid nitrogen temperature maybe 25 when you go for minus 130 degrees celsius they could be able to get some very good ductility and also the yield strength also enhanced drastically okay so for example if you see that uh, work hardening curve uh, initially for room temperature it is it is going down uh, it is not straight but if you go for low temperature test uh, the work hardening uh, curve is almost straight okay so it means it has very good uh, strain hardening effect it has uh, the ductility is enhanced because mainly because of this when you are seeing this post microstructure we can understand why it is happening uh, suppose this is the factorography image they showed here so most of the cases it is forming a dimple microstructure i, I hope you may know that if it is dimple structure means it is a kind of very ductile uh, the material is very ductile it means and also inside these dimples, you can see the kind of uh, small particles. They analyze that particle also. That is basically manganese enriched uh, particle. Okay, because of that, might be your uh, little bit we got the very uh, less ductility. Even though ductility is very good, 20 to 40 percent they got it. Because of this manganese enriched case, it's really less. Okay, so now you, here this is something like. Uh, EBST map. So by this EBST map, you can understand that uh, like how this uh, different kind of planes are uh, forming. Like texture evolution, you can understand. Uh, basically, the IPF IPF map is shown here. So uh, here not uh, here I am not seeing any kind of uh, some simple colors are not dominating. Only basically here what. Uh, you can in the in the left hand side you can see the different kind of IPF maps. So there you can understand that most of the cases it is blue color and red color. It, what it means is most of the grains are oriented in the one 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 and zero zero one planes. So that is the meaning of that. Okay. In the right hand side, basically they showed the uh, KM map. So that is uh, nothing but it is a canal average uh, misorientation distribution. That basically it will gives the idea about how much stress is uh, uh, inside the material it is uh, uh, formed that you can understand. Okay, means uh, if it is uh, uh, blue to red, it is means minimum to maximum. Okay, so also in the microstructure, uh, they uh, you can see the some kind of uh, lines, kind of uh, red color lines that is some kind of. Uh, deformation twins that is basically it is called like a deformation twins uh, that is basically in the plane of 111 60 degree misorientation so that they uh, plotted here so because of this misorientation because of these twins uh, the ductility is enhanced in this particular alloy okay so for example i hope you may know about how the deformation of this any of this crystalline material will happen right like there are two theories of the slip and tuning so usually uh, the material, every material, suppose if you take FCC material that have number of slip system based on that slip system, uh, the deformation might happen, right? Like if slip is arrested, then tuning will happen, okay? So that's why when you go for low temperature, the low temperature usually arrest this uh, slip uh, that will initiate the tuning, okay? The deformation tuning will happen. So based on this deformation tuning, we are getting a very high strength and ductility. So, so the twin formation will enhance both. Okay. So that's why we are getting more uh, ductility in this alloy. So for example, here they compare the different uh, 
lamp process with the SLM process and as gas, as recrystallized. So if we take the uh, DED, DED is giving a good property out of it. Like uh, 660, you are getting UTS is uh, also the ductility also something around 20% in the room temperature. In case of cast, it is only 493, okay. So it is uh, almost, we are getting very uh, 1.5 times higher uh, strength we are getting when you go for uh, lamp process or SLM process, okay. So hope uh, in this, from this study, we could be able to understand that it is giving a very good uh, fine structure even after additive manufacturing. So the ductility is improved uh, in the low temperature deformation. So this work demonstrates that this is the initial work of the additive manufacturing of the HA. So this work basically demonstrates that the potential of this using this technology to build a large and more complex part like the, this HA can be uh, used as a, a potential component for the complex parts. That's what uh, it says. Okay. So next study, people did some heat treatment. Okay. Like I hope the post processing usually in order to remove the residual stress, we have to do the heat treatment. Uh, that's what they did. They, they did the heat treatment, then they checked the property. So there is no change in the up to certain temperature. Like already I told, uh, this alloy is having a very good uh, uh, structural stability because of that, at least up to 700 or 800, there is no loss. Okay, only after 1100, there is a drastic uh, change in the strength they could be able to observe okay so that's what you can see here almost the yield is uh, similar for the different temperatures uh, ductility also improved after annealing okay so the, the fracture again it shows it's a dimple fracture uh, there is uh, no difference basically it is uh, it's showing like it is a ductile material so that's what they understood from the heat treatment okay so now i'm going to the van like how by using this wire arc additive manufacturing, people will, uh, people, they, uh, how they make this uh, high entropy alloy. Okay. So, already I told about you can, you to generate arm, you can use any kind of welding technology. Okay. You may use a MIG welding or you may use a TIG welding. Suppose in case of MIG welding, your wire will be consumed. Okay. Your wire will be act as an electrode, it will be get consumed. In case of TIG, uh, the electrode will be a non consumer electrode. In case of TIG, you have to send a raw material separately from the other places. Okay. You have to feed it separately, uh, feed it from the outside. Outside the source, you have to send it, then you have to make it. So now the idea is how to generate the, uh, how to generate this high entropy by using this. Uh, BAM technique. Okay. Maybe you can go for multiple wires, you can send it together that you can do. Otherwise, you can combine these different uh, wires together, then you will get a high entropy effect, right? So, here that's what they did. Like, this is the aluminum based high entropy. So, what they did is uh, they took this stainless steel, uh, 304 stainless steel, that they uh, mix it with the aluminum, pure aluminum, pure cobalt wire, nickel wire and aluminum made, everything together they have taken, they made it for the 1.8 uh, mm diameter, okay. So in this combustion, basically the iron is more, 70% iron, 20% chromium, mostly 10% nickel is there. Uh, then the com by using this combined wire technique, they make this high entropy because uh, they uh, just they uh, wind it together, okay. That is basically they are calling it like a combined cable wire. This combined cable wire will be as uh, used as an electrode. Maybe here they use the MIG welding process. So layer by layer, they have deposited uh, and then they got the very good property out of it. Like uh, So in this aluminum based process, already I told it will form a FCC plus B2 phase. So that's what they got it, FCC plus B2 phase. Uh, so in case of harness, if you compare almost very good high harness they got it almost throughout the building direction the harness is same okay in case of all the different process parameters uh, it is similar uh, you can see that uh, uh, yeah the tensile property also 
So almost in all case of VAM, like different speed, they are getting a similar kind of property like 2800 UTS, uh, they are uh, getting it. Uh, as compared to the uh, casting, it is very comparable to the casting, okay. So already I told there is a difference between the laser based and VAM process. In case of VAM process, usually it will form a very coarser structure, okay. It will uh, basically it's like a casting process only, like you will get a uh, in casting also you will get a very big grain size. Similarly, VAM also you will get a very coarser grain size. So because of that, here we are getting an equivalent property to the casting in case of VAM. Okay, but the ductility will be, but the porosity will be very less in case of VAM as compared to the powder based, laser based technique. Okay, but in case of laser based, we can control this kind of uh, uh, microstructure. So similarly in VAM also you can control it, like there are so many techniques are there to control the microstructure. So, uh, so if you change it, then you may get some kind of uh, very good property out of it. Okay. So, so I hope now I gave the idea about how to make the multi-component alloy through VAM or VIRAR, also how to make it through the laser based technique. Now I'm coming to the post-processing technique. Okay. So usually people will uh, do some kind of uh, for the additive manufacturing. Uh, already I told in case of VAM or uh, if you take other cases, uh, in case of uh, laser based technique also, usually it is forming a kind of residual stresses. Okay, this residual stresses are uh, basically this uh, tensile residual stresses. Okay, so because of that your property may affect. Okay, so in order to improve the fatigue life of the component, suppose if you if you change some surface, at least if you change some surface property, that will improve the fatigue life of the component. Means just we are introducing a compressive stress uh, or we are refining the grains uh, for the certain uh, subsurface. Okay, up to the certain subsurface depth, we are uh, uh, trying to refine it and also induce the compressive stress that will increase the fatigue life and also strength also. Um, uh, modulus also will increase. Okay, that is the idea of it. So that you can do it by, there are many techniques nowadays, surface deformation processes are available. Just Google it, you can find out n number of surface deformation process, civil plastic deformation process. So I'm going to uh, talk about laser shock pinning. Okay, little bit idea about laser shock pinning, then I'll just stop my lecture. Uh, suppose in case of mechanical case, just you assume like a, you have a cylinder piston assembly, uh, one side you are keeping your workpiece. Suppose inside the chamber you have the small steel balls. Suppose if you are accelerating the piston, the steel balls also will get some velocity and then it will bombard over your uh, workpiece. Okay, like when you are keep on bombard over your workpiece, then it will induce a kind of shock wave. Because of that shock wave, it will refine your microstructure and also change the surface property of your material okay that is the idea of this surface deformation process so that you can do it by the laser itself suppose if you have the laser high energy laser so that will be converted into high energy plasma that plasma will be induced a very shock wave inside the material even as compared to the mechanical case yes as compared to the smart process the laser sharpening will give a very higher depth you can get a uh, refined surface okay so, so for example, the laser sharpening, you no need of tooling or any kind of complex shape you can access, uh, gradient properties you can get, that is the advantage of the pinning, okay. So for example, uh, here I showed how these shock waves are generating by this laser beam, you can see here, okay. So, as compared to the conventional shock pinning, laser pinning is giving a very good compressive residual strength. Uh, also, the fatigue life is much higher as compared to the other process. You can see here. Okay. So, like how they are doing this shock pinning, you can see here. Uh, so, for example, uh, for connecting rod, so precise treatment uh, they could be able to do. Um, and also, in case of uh, impeller, you can see uh, how they are doing this, the edges, how they are doing this. Uh, sharpening you can see here. Mm. Okay, this process 
same thing they adopted in the uh, high entropy also okay like similar thing they did uh, they try to improve the uh, surface property so that's what i try to say okay so means same thing in the phi component they did it uh, different kind of laser uh, power they used maybe here the phi uh, phi cycles they used so when you're changing to the phi cycle keep on they could able to increase the strength and ductility so already i told the uh, so when you go for sharpening that will induce a kind of uh, refine the structure so that will create a kind of heterogeneous microstructure okay because of this heterogeneous microstructure uh, you can get a very good uh, strength and ductility in this particular uh, after additive manufacturing you can improve these properties okay so for example so this is the microstructure evolution will happen so in the near the subsurface you can see the many twins then if you go to the interior uh, there you will find a coarser grains okay so because of this heterogeneous microstructure it is giving a good property we are getting uh, also so when you are inducing the compressive strength that will control the pores also like you can decrease the pores and cracks also will get closed okay these are all advantage of the uh, laser sharpening okay uh, so this is the case uh, so hope if i have time uh, do I, may I have the time uh, madhukur otherwise yeah yeah you have time uh, yeah you can take time we have it uh, five minutes may I take yeah maybe five minutes i will just continue so these are all the things we are doing okay like uh, so basically uh, i am working towards this laser sharpening and uh, also we are doing some kind of uh, vam process and uh, laser based process also we are doing so basically we are working in this medium entropy alloy okay this is uh, basically our uh, paper just i would like to show these are all this uh, um, so we have like a five component here we have make it like a three component we try to make through the uh, dd system so this is the system it's available in the rr gate rr gate maybe you may know that uh, it's in the hindu so there we did this uh, deposition process uh, so so basically what we did is something like we did some kind of single track experiment by the single track experiment we will find out where we are getting a very good uh, like melt pool size so based on the melt pool depth uh, everything depends on that uh, also the porosity also we will check in the each layer so based on that what layer will be uh, giving best property so based on that we will select the laser power and property and uh, uh, also substrate like if those things we will uh, decide and then we did some kind of uh, xrd so in case of uh, three component we got a single phase fcc uh, system okay so also we did some kind of nano indentation study uh, already i told uh, in in case of uh, led process we are getting a, a different grain sizes like a kind of globular grain size and uh, yeah, equi bipedaxial grain size so that's what we are getting a different property in scanning direction and building direction so that's what we try to see in uh, in the nano level we try to see how much difference is there for the uh, all this uh, modulus hardness so those things we want to see that's what we did it here uh, uh, so what basically we understood from this three component is basically it is giving a higher activation volume than five component system uh because of because it has very high lattice distortion uh, it has it means a lot of uh, short range barriers chemical short range ordering uh, that will lead to a very higher frictional stresses in this particular uh, medium entropy alloy so that's why here we are getting a kind of uh, a very higher srs ratio in this particular uh, component okay so maybe with this i may uh, stop this uh, maybe if there is some discussion maybe then we can discuss for some time uh, this is the thin film application i told right like you can see that the gladding layer is having very high strength if you go for this is the parent one parent one is having this 
very less strength. Okay, like for example, this aluminum based coating, you can see here. Okay, so with this, maybe I'll close my session. I hope you got some idea about uh, uh, like uh, this SPD technique uh, or laser based additive manufacturing or RAM, how they are uh, fabricating in this particular high entropy alloys. Uh, still, I hope this allies could be a feature material. So, with this, uh, I will. I hope the research people got some idea about so what direction they can work. Uh, maybe this uh, kind of problems will be very good for the research. Okay. So, with this, uh, before stopping it, this is my my area. So, basically, nowadays I'm working in additive manufacturing. Not only additive, I will work in this surface engineering and uh, micro and nano machining of this HEA. So all those areas I'm working. So thank you. With this, I'll just top stop. If there is any query, maybe I can answer for it. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Don, for your presentation. It's very insightful. And thank you for your time. I think we have received a couple of questions. Um, uh, before can I see that, this? Um, before I have a question, uh, oh, do you yeah, have multi-wire uh, wire arc credit manufacturing setup? I yes, yes. Um, right now, what we developed here is so we developed this twin wire arc technique, twin twin setup. So basically, uh, here we are using like uh, uh, you can send the two wires together at the same time because, for example, if I'm taking a uh, nichrome wire, nichrome, nichrome plus cobalt wire. If I have taken, then I can do a medium entropy alloy. Like kind of, we are we are doing this medium entropy alloy research now. So slowly we plan to do some kind of hybrid kind of process, like combined wire technique. What I told you, multiple wires you can uh, put it uh, together, then you can feed it in the wire already. Wham, we have it. Already we tried it in the LED also, we have tried powder, powder is working very well, so we could able to get uh, uniform cra uniform uh, cross section, or sorry, uniform composition, we could able to maintain in the uh, uh, DED system, already we tried it in the RR gate, Indo. So, so we are just uh, progressing it actually, it is, takes time, but still I hope we can do it. So, Yeah, is there any hello question? sir may I ask you yeah please may I ask one question yeah. okay uh, first of all i really congratulate you uh, for giving a very good landscape of entropy yes, and a comparison by different aim techniques and all of that. but actually i think i'm going in a vehicle there was some interruption here and there i got one small question sir this yes, sir, uh, the high entropy alloys, eh? uh, what are the real components which have gone into industrial products? My knowledge in this yes, area is really yeah, nowadays, uh, nowadays, people are already induced many of the co components in this particular uh, high entropy alloy. What I uh, last time, what I heard from this Professor Ye, so he showed many of these structural components, uh, they have made it like kind of bearings. Uh, bearings they uh, made it for the certain automobile companies and also for the aeronautical companies also uh, uh, certain components they made it like kind of uh, people are trying some uh, turbine components so many of the small components many of things uh, i hope it is started to use actually already in the uh, process actually Yeah, actually, the literature wise, there's a huge volume of literature and I interrupt your lawyers, actually. Yes, so yes. So, yes. when we ask our students to write a review article, they fail to write applications. Uh, just yeah, writing structural applications, not that. What uh, I was insisting the students is that write, let's say, connecting rod or piston or some uh, rocket. Okay. Uh, so, already, like that. already said. On, uh, Already certain review papers are there. So application uh -huh, okay. uh, regarding this okay. application, uh, recently many two or I could be able to see one or two papers are published in the, the application tours. 
uh, you can see it actually basically in this i okay movie. yeah okay sir okay okay sir thank you okay sir thank you very much okay sir. sir yes please yeah sir we have a question what are the challenges in producing high entropy alloys with traditional processes yeah that's what like always already told like like in terms of wire like suppose if you go for vamp uh, getting this exact composition is difficult like we have to look for the wires so some cases we cannot uh, produce in a wire form okay so some material won't be available in the wire form then in that case particular composition we cannot make it so again uh, if you go for uh, led again the powder size so we have to get this uh, particular powder size and also it should be mixed uh, pre mixed properly otherwise it will make a kind of uh, the composition won't be good so these are all uh, this these are the main challenges okay like in case of ram and led powder in case of powder powder size is the problem if you go for ram the wire size is the wire we cannot get for the all the material so so we have to compromise somewhere here and there but certain composition we can make it so that's what we are trying what are all the composition we could able to do that we are trying so it will take some time maybe some nowadays people are trying some hybrid also uh, they are trying to mix with wire with the powder also they are trying to make it hybrid additive manufacturing they are trying to do so that also under process okay yeah please 